If you're doing data visualization, it's only a matter of time before someone hands you a data set with coordinates that you need to stick on a map. Lucky you, because maps are great. We have plenty of Antagma tutorials about how to put coordinates on a map. But before you can do that, you need to have an actual map inside of Houdini. And while OpenStreetMap data is very helpful for that, sometimes the region that you need is too specific for OSM data to work. Say you need the boundaries of electoral districts. Or maybe it's too big, say you need the entire world. In those scenarios, there's no getting around it. You'll need to make that map yourself. And that's what I'm going to show you. Now, I am by no means a geography expert. Uh, I'm just a biologist who likes maps. So I want to give a shout out to Craig Taylor, who's been a, an inspiration for a lot of this. He has a whole bunch of Houdini map making content on his website, mapzilla.co.uk. And you can find him on socials as at Craig Taylor Viz. So how do you create a map? Enter GIS software. GIS stands for Geographic Information System, and is basically a catch-all term for any kind of geographic or geospatial data. GIS software is able to handle pretty much all of the various geo data formats that you'll come across, and it'll help us massage that data into a CSV format that we can then export and use in Houdini. So the first thing that we'll need is some of this fancy GIS software, and my favorite is called QGIS, and it's my favorite because it's free. You can find it here. Next up, we'll need some data to work with. Let's go back to the 1850s and use what is arguably the first instance of geographic analysis of disease data, and people then using that geographic analysis to prevent a disease from spreading. So what happened? In 1854, there was a big outbreak of cholera in the Soho area of London's West End, and hundreds of people were dying rapidly. So people thought at the time that cholera outbreaks had something to do with contaminated air, but the physician called John Snow disagreed. He figured correctly that cholera outbreaks have something to do with contaminated water. And so he drew the locations of the deaths on a map. And then he also mapped the location of the water pumps in the Soho area. And lo and behold, there was a water pump smack in the middle of the cluster of deaths that he mapped. So they took the contaminated water pump out of commission, the disease stopped spreading in the local area. And as you guessed it, Jon Snow was the hero that saved the day. So let's build this cholera map inside of Houdini. And for that, we'll need some data. So I'll include all of this in the project files, but just so you see where I got this from, we'll start with Jon Snow's original coordinates, which were helpfully digitized by the data scientist, Robin Wilson. We'll then want some sort of an outline of our area of interest. And for that, we'll use the electoral boundaries map of London, which you can find on the London data store here. And we'll want some street map data as well, because it's nice to have a bit of context. So the German company Geofabric if it is German, it's pronounced Geofabrik. Thanks, Mo. Geofabrik has done some excellent work subdividing OpenStreetMap data into specific areas and then making them available as GIS files. And they've done this for the entire planet. If you dive through the layers deeply enough, you can find Greater London in here as well. Let's open QGIS and let's start importing some data. So from the Jon Snow folder, let's grab the coloradeaths.shp and drop it into QGIS. Now, immediately, you'll be greeted with this scary looking prompt. And essentially, there are different systems out there for mapping coordinates. The most universally used one is called WGS84, but our data set is British, which means that it comes in the British Ordnance Survey National Grid System. It's not an issue, but all QGIS is doing here is checking how we want to unify these coordinates. So we can just follow this suggestion and hit OK. And a quick note on these coordinate systems if you ever import a data set and you think, Within QGIS, it looks a little bit skewed. Odds are you're importing it using the wrong reference system. And so it's always good to double check what the reference system is. And so in the bottom corner here, if you double click, uh, it gives you this window. And then you can see here that there's a few other ones that I've used recently. And so this EPSG code is what you want to be looking for uh, to see what kind of format your system, uh, your, your, your data set is using. So a quick note on the user interface here. In the middle, you see the imported coordinates. QGIS is a, a layer-based software, so on the left here are our data layers, and on the right is our menu with the different tools that we can use. So we've got the locations of our cholera deaths. Now let's import the location of those pumps that John Snow identified. So that will be pumps.shp, and we can just drag and drop that file in here as well. So we've got our deaths and our pumps. And because we're Houdini people, we like to have a look at the actual data. So to do this, uh, you can right click on one of those layers to open an attribute table. So we can see some IDs, but we don't actually have the coordinates here. So let's close down this table. And in the toolbar on the right, we are going to look for add geometry attributes. Then we'll hit run, close. And every time you run one of these tools inside of QGIS, it'll create a new layer, which means that you do have a little bit of a history hierarchy happening here, which is nice. 
So let's hide the previous layer. And this is the uh, color depths with the geometry info. We can also get our spreadsheet by hitting the attribute table button here. And now we've got X and Y coordinates. As you can see here from the numbers, they're not uh, latitude and longitude coordinates, they're X and Y coordinates within that um, British Ordnance Survey uh, national grid system. So let's right click. You can export save features as, and you can export it as a CSV file. Now we've already done this, but this is where you export. So we want to do the same thing for our pumps. So select the pumps, add geometry attributes, double click on here, hit run, close, use our attribute table to double check that we do in fact have our X and our Y coordinates, fantastic. And then right click, export, save features as. So we'll grab the londonward.shp, drag and drop it in. And if you zoom out, you'll see that this has given us all of London, which is a bit much. So we're only interested in the area around Soho. And then if we zoom back in, maybe hide it for a see where our data went. There we go. Um, so it's this area here. So we can use our select tool, click on the Soho area, and then we can go extract selected features to just grab that London board um, that we've selected. And there we go. Move that down. And so now you can see that it's uh, the right one. Next up, the roads. So we'll grab the GIS OSM roads free shapefile and drop it in. And again, that's a bit much. So again, we'll select and let's just grab a big old bounding box around there and extract the selected features and run. That's not a super clean selection, of course. And it would be nice if we can do some sort of a Boolean using that shape of the outline of the West End. Before we do this Boolean operation, we're going to rename things because it makes things a little bit easier. So this will we'll call roads and then the West End. Okay, so the intersection tool, the input layer is the roads, the overlay layer is the West End. And let's run this. If we hide the original, we see that we've now uh, done a really nice little boolean of all. And next up we want to run the QGIS equivalent of a connectivity SOP so we can have a nice ID attribute for each road which will help us recreate them later on in Houdini. So that is called an auto incremental field and let's call it part ID and run and if we look at our table here we see that we now have a part ID. Then you'll notice that everything here is still as lines. And for our transfer into Houdini, we only want the individual coordinates. So essentially we're looking for points, not prims. And we get those points with the extract vertices tool. And then as before, we just have to run the uh, geometry attributes to get those X and Y coordinates. If we now look at our attribute spreadsheets, uh, there's a lot of attributes here, but we do have our x-coordinate and our y-coordinate. And then we see that these look like they are um, in a different coordinate system as before, because these look like they are uh, latitude and longitude. So we need to change that. So let's get rid of this uh, geometry info layer that we've just created. So we need to go back to this vertices layer. And instead of uh, adding the geometry attributes first, we need to reproject this. So uh, let's use the reproject layer tool. And we need to change, we need to change this from this WGS84 coordinate system to the British National Grid system. Hit run, close it down. And if we now uh, add our geometry attributes and open up the table, then we can see that our X and our Y coordinates are the same sort of system that um, the color deaths and the pumps were before. So now we can right click and export this, but there are an awful lot of data columns in that attribute file. We've got a little bit too much information here and I like a clean table. So let's hit this pencil tool to edit and then the delete field tool where we can select everything except for the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, the part ID, and let's, uh, let's see, let's keep the name as well. Great, that looks much cleaner. So now we right click, export, save features as a CSV. 
And we then have to do the same for the west end. So uh, let's untick everything else so that we have a cleaner view. Um, we need to extract the vertices. We need to then uh, jump tree attributes. Let's open up the spreadsheet and we'll see that they are in the right system. Fantastic. And let's do the same filtering where we um, get rid of some of these, except for the X, -co X coordinate, the Y coordinates, and the name. So again, one last time, export save features as a CSV file, and then we can go over to Houdini. So inside Houdini, we have a pretty simple job. We'll just drop down a table import node and we'll look for the cholera deaths. So we just need to get two floats in there for the X coordinates and the Y coordinates. And the X coordinate is number one and only an attribute length of one. And the Y coordinate was column number three. No, is that number two? Yeah, it was number two. And the same goes for the pumps. And that didn't have the name, so it was column one and column number two. And then we want to have our outline of the West End. And lastly, our roads. And for the roads, we also want to add a part ID which is an integer, oh, one actual length. So that was column one for the part ID. And then we also want to have a string, uh, the name, which was column zero. And so we've got our names here. Then across the board, we want to add a wrangle that just uh, maps our X coordinates to our X position. to the Y coordinate. Let's copy that one across to all the others as well. Oh, made a mistake here. This is supposed to be column three and this is column two. There we go, that's better. Okay, so we have our outline of the West End here, but if we compare that to the outline in QGIS, it looks like our Houdini implementation here is upside down. So let's add a minus to the Y coordinate. And that looks about the same. Let's do that for the other ones as well. So we're in the home stretch. We have our color deaths. We have our pump locations. We've got the boundaries for the West End, which we can simply uh, add it. use an add sop and connect those. And then we add another add sop for the West End roads and we will um, connect those by attributes and the attribute was called path ID. Let's put down a sweep node so that we can see these roads a little bit better. Merge them with the outline of the West End. Let's make that one closed so that we see the outline a little bit better. And then let's drop down a sphere and a copy the points so that we can have a look at our cover deaths. This needs to be a little bit bigger. And then another one for our pumps and an output. And maybe let's. Um, Make these ones red. Let's make these ones blue. Up to pay scale there a little bit. And zoom in. And then you can see that this water pump was the one that was contaminated. So after we've merged everything together, 
we notice that, of course, with these numbers being being quite high, because it's this uh, British coordinate system that means that everything's been imported way off in space somewhere. So let's just do a nice size to um, push everything over towards the um, center of our scene. And maybe let's also add in a transform to scale things down a little bit. So it's at a more reasonable sort of scale. So there you go. Here is our OG epidemiological data set on a map of the West End of London, ready to be rendered. So next time you need to do some map data viz, just grab yourself a shapefile from one of the countless data sources online, and you can then run that through the QGIS workflow that I just showed you, and then you can have some fun with them inside Houdini. Thanks for watching. Chris here. I hope you've enjoyed this video by Jeroen. If you want to support us bringing in more expert guests and making videos in general, please consider becoming a patron of ours. And once you're there, maybe watch the three-part course about clustering Jeroen did for us as well. Links are in the description. Massive thanks going out to all our current patrons and until next time, cheers guys.